For a period of approximately four months between September and December of 2018, I experienced a consistent and sustained effort by many people within the government to seek to politically interfere in the exercise of prosecutorial discretion in my role as the Attorney General of Canada in an inappropriate effort to secure a deferred prosecution agreement with SNC-Lavalin. These events involved 11 people, excluding myself and my political staff, from the Prime Minister's office, the Privy Council office, and the office of the Minister of Finance. This included in-person conversations, telephone calls, emails, and text messages. There were approximately 10 phone calls and 10 meetings specifically about SNC, and I and or my staff were a part of these meetings. Within these conversations, there were expressed statements regarding the necessity of interference in the SNC-Lavalin matter, the potential of consequences, and veiled threats if a DPA was not made available to SNC. This, to me, begs the entire question of what exactly constitutes pressure. According to the former minister's testimony, 11 people made 20 points of contact with her or her office over a period of close to four months. Four of these people never met with the Attorney General in person. In my case, the Attorney General solicited the meeting. That's two meetings and two phone calls per month for the Minister and her office on an issue that could cost a minimum of 9,000 jobs. The Minister confirmed last week that nobody ever asked her to make or make not make the decision. You now know that the subject of those interactions was whether she would take independent, external advice on the matter. Mr. Chair, we did what those 9,000 people would have every right to expect of their Prime Minister. In my role as Attorney General, I had received the decision of the DPP in September, had reviewed the matter, made a decision on what was appropriate given a DPA, and communicated that to the Prime Minister. I had also taken additional steps that the Prime Minister asked me to, such as meeting with the clerk. In my view, the communications and efforts to change my mind on this matter should have stopped. I learned for the first time while watching the former Attorney General's testimony that she had made a final decision on the 16th of September. My understanding is that nobody in the PMO or PCO knew that at that time either. In fact, it is not to my knowledge how the law works. My understanding, which was informed by the public service and lawyers in the PMO, is that the Attorney General's power to direct the DPP extends until the time a verdict is rendered. My further understanding is that the Attorney General is free to take advice on the decision up until that point and is obligated to bring fresh eyes to new evidence. In mid-November, the PMO requested that I meet with Mathieu Bouchard and Elder Marquez to discuss the matter, which I did on November 22nd. Mathieu and Elder continued to plead their case, talking about, if I'm not sure in my decision that we could hire an eminent person to advise me. They were kicking the tires. I said no. My mind had been made up and they needed to stop. This was enough. The DPP considered the matter again itself in late September when new evidence was presented by the company and the DPP made a fresh decision on October the 9th, 2018. It was in that spirit that Mathieu Bouchard and Elder Marquez had a discussion with the former Attorney General on November 22nd, 2018. They discussed a memo prepared by lawyers in the Department of Justice that described the option to seek counsel from an eminent jurist. It was also the subject of my and the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff's one meeting on this file with the Attorney General's Chief of Staff, which I will happily answer questions about. In any case, that was our operating assumption. The, de the decision wasn't made and we were free to inform it with advice. On December the 5th of 2018, I met with Jerry Butts. We had both sought out this meeting. I wanted to speak about a number of things, including up bringing up SNC and the barrage of people hounding me and my staff. Towards the end of our meeting, which was in the Chateau Laurier, I raised how I needed everybody to stop talking to me about SNC as I had made up my mind and the engagements were inappropriate. 
Jerry then took over the conversation and said how we need a solution on the SNC stuff. He said I needed to find a solution. I said no, and I referenced the preliminary inquiry and the judicial review. I said further that I gave the clerk the only appropriate solution that could have happened, and that was the letter idea that was not taken up. Jerry talked to me about how the statute was a statute passed by Harper and that he does not like the law. I said something like, that is the law that we have. Minister Wilson-Raybould solicited the meeting with me. She also raised the subject with me. She asked if I had a view on the file, and I said I understood our offices were working together on ideas. We talked briefly about the idea of asking a retired Supreme Court justice for advice, but I noted that I had no expertise in the matter. I believe that the Harper comment she referred to was in the context of that discussion, Mr. Mr. Chair. She said that what Elder and Mathieu were proposing had never been done before. I said, my understanding is that remediation agreements are brand new to Canada and that the PPSC itself was not very old, having been brought into being during the Harper years. I was not making a partisan point, Mr. Chair. My suggestion was that it is a legitimate public policy discuss discussion to have in this circumstance, and it would help clarify the Attorney General's powers in this and any subsequent case. I suggested she speak with the clerk or the public service for more expert advice. I said that it was her call, and I knew it was her call. I have no memory of her asking me to do anything or to speak with staff about any aspect of this file. At no time did the former Attorney General suggest to me that Elder and Mathieu had done anything wrong. On December 18th of 2018, my Chief of Staff was urgently summoned to a meeting with Jerry Butts and Katie Telford to discuss SNC. They wanted to know where I, me, am at in terms of finding a solution. They told her that they felt like the issue was getting worse and that I was not doing anything. They referenced a possible call with the Prime Minister and the clerk the next day. I will now read to you a transcript of the most relevant sections of a text conversation between my Chief of Staff and I almost immediately after that meeting. Jessica. Basically, they want a solution, nothing new. They want external counsel retained to give you an opinion on whether you can review the DPP's decision here and whether you should in this case. I told them that would be interference. Jerry said, quote, Jess, there is no solution here that does not involve some interference, end quote. At least they are finally being honest about what they are asking you to do. Don't care about the PPSC's independence. KD was like, quote, we don't want to debate legalities anymore, end quote. They keep being like, we aren't lawyers, but there has to be some solution here. Mojag, I text. So where were things left? Jessica, so unclear. I said what of course let you know about the conversation um, and they said that they were going to kick the tires with a few people on this tonight. The clerk was waiting outside when she left, when I left. But they said that they want to set up a call between you and the prime minister and the clerk tomorrow. I said that of course you'd be happy to speak to your boss. They seem quite keen on the idea of you retaining an ex-Supreme Court of Canada judge to get advice on this. Katie Telford thinks it gives us cover in the business community and the legal community and that it would allow the Prime Minister to say we were doing something. She was like, quote, if Jody is nervous, we would, of course, line up all kinds of people to write op-eds saying that what she is doing is proper, end quote. The second and final meeting I had on the file was with Jessica Prince, the Minister's Chief of Staff, and Katie Telford. There was no urgency to attend that meeting. I remember that meeting very, very differently than the account given last week. I remember Ms. Prince saying that the minister didn't want to consider quote unquote political factors in the decision and was worried about the appearance of political interference. I said that it's the minister's decision, of course, but to my mind, 9,000 people are not a political issue. It, is, it was a very real public policy problem. Either way she decided, I could not see how 
having someone like Beverly McLaughlin give the minister advice constituted political interference. Ms. Telford's comments were, report, were reported here last week out of context. Ms. Telford was simply saying what we, also, what we say all the time when legal matters come up in the presence of lawyers, that we are not lawyers and cannot debate the law. On the op-ed point, she was simply saying that we would do our best to support the minister, whatever decision she chose to make. I received a call from the Prime Minister and was informed I was being shuffled out of my role as Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. I will not go into details of this call or subsequent communications about the shuffle, but I will say that I stated I believe the reason was because of the SNC matter. They denied this to be the case. The Prime Minister began the call by saying that Minister Bryson's sudden departure had put us in, quote, a tough spot. He said that he didn't want to shuffle cabinet, but that he needed our, quote, best players to move in order to, quote, pitch in. He said the Indigenous agenda was really important to him and to the country, as the Attorney General knew well. He said he didn't want to move Minister Philpott, but that she was the best qualified person to do Treasury Board because she had been Vice Chair. He then said that would leave a large hole at Indigenous services. And he didn't want people to think he was relenting at all on the, the agenda. He said he knows how much she, quote, loves being Mojag, but that she was one of our top people. And moving her to Indigenous services would, quote, show Canadians how seriously we take this. He um, spoke to me about my being shuffled out as Minister of Justice and Attorney General provided rationale, of which I won't get into. Um, and then I said to him, I can't help but think that this has something to do with a decision I would not take. Minister Wilson-Raybould said, quote, I feel I'm being shifted out of justice for other reasons. The Prime Minister replied that he was, he was doing the shuffle because he had to, and because he thinks it's the best thing for the government and the country. He repeated that he wouldn't be doing it at all if it weren't for Minister Bryson's departure. I had a subsequent very um, close in time conversation with Jerry Butts where I specifically said, um, I know this has to do with SNC and a decision that I wouldn't take. To which he said, are you questioning the integrity of the Prime Minister? To which I didn't say anything. There was a point where the Minister asked me directly if her departure from the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General had anything whatsoever to do with the SNC-Lavalin matter, and I said no. And I did say, I asked her in a surprised tone whether she was questioning the integrity of the Prime Minister. It wasn't an accusation, it wasn't a threat, it was genuine surprise that someone that I had spent so much time with and that the Prime Minister had spent so much time with could interpret the um, request being the, the move in such a dark light, to be honest.